I suppose. All right, welcome. So I've got a little bit of downtime waiting for the spray foamer to be ready to, for the next phase of insulating the walls and ceilings. But I figure now's a good time to show everyone all the wiring that went in to preparing this for the spray foam insulation and you know all the strapping and things like that. So basically there are let's say four categories. There is uh, AC 110 volt um, which you typically think of as your home outlet power. DC which is mainly running lights and things like that but also if there's any DC motors like your water pump or you know the ignition maybe for the hot water heater the DC fridge things like that and then the third category is going to be maybe water inlet there's really just one component of that and that is literally the, the water fill fixture and then the fourth would be your power in from your solar panels so we'll start just the order I I listed them there. We'll start with the AC system. So first off, I'm going to show the layout. So basically where the camera is, is the front of the bus. Back here is the back. And this here will end up being a wall. So our bed will sit here in kind of the front to back orientation and our shower and bathroom over on this side. And then the wall will sort of come out and over here and everything behind that will be what I'm calling the garage. So my solar panels, that power will enter right here down the back wall on the garage side underneath the bed and then underneath the bed is where most all the electrical stuff will will live at least the batteries and like the charge controller all that stuff will live down here and then on the back side of the wall which will be here that's probably where I will put the AC circuit breaker box and the DC the first DC fuse box so on the AC side like I said this will be the circuit breaker box so I want basically two entryways into the wall one will be down here and the other will be on this side and this is again beneath the bed on this side. Oh, the wiring. The wires I'm using on the AC side are 10 gauge three, or 10 three, I guess it's called. So three conductors, they're all stranded wire. They're all Encore marine grade 10 copper wires. And 10 is overkill, but pretty much everywhere I've decided to go overkill. So 10 probably can take, I'm sure I'll be wrong, but let's say 25 to 30 amps, something like that. So that's plenty, plenty, right? So I'm gonna have one circuit just feeding this, which will be my garage. So, you know, the idea behind that is I'm most likely gonna be running power tools or something like that if I'm actually working on building something or doing, doing work. The next one is another circuit all unto itself and that's for our combo washer dryer unit and that thing does pull a lot of amps i think it pulls like 20 amps so yeah so that's two of the three circuits on this driver side all right the final circuit on this driver side is going to feed every other outlet on this side so we'll start here and kind of yeah get pretty close so we're into the wall here and then we're going to work our way back right here this is the bathroom, this whole area. So basically this will be the bathroom vanity and sink. So we've got an outlet just on one side for running most likely a hair dryer or something like that. All right, so we continue down here. Uh, the first outlet is the GFCI. Every outlet after that is just a standard outlet. But that being the first protects the rest of the circuit. Okay, so then we follow that line here come along and now we're in basically the kitchen we're behind the refrigerator here now the fridge will be a 12 volt fridge it won't need this but i figured just in case we're going to have this here you know if something something uh, unexpected needs some power there also because this is the kitchen countertop 
if I needed to, I could run power from this box in, into that, you know, after the walls are up. All right, so from here, we're gonna go up, and then we're gonna branch two different directions. We're going one box up here, and this is above the refrigerator, inside the cabinet. I figure that's a good place for a microwave or toaster oven, something like that. And again, because this will be cabinetry, if I need to, I can extend from this box out and add more 110 volt power. All right, so back to this split. We run in this direction. Here is our kitchen countertop. So I've got one, two 110 volt AC outlets on top of the kitchen counter, at least I think for the most part, that's where we use most of our plugs at home is right here in the kitchen, you know, run a toaster or something like that, a coffee grinder, that kind of stuff. So that's it for this driver side. So now we'll go back and we'll jump in the wall on the passenger side. All right, so here I'm gonna have two circuits. I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, two circuits. So one circuit will run the mini split, which will live right above me here. So that'll be powering the indoor unit and once I drill a hole through the wall, the outdoor unit as, as well. So that one, we follow that right up here. And I actually teed off of that and added this outlet here. This is our sort of above bed for our projector, most likely is all that this will be used for. So I went ahead and just stole some power from that, from this for that. So then we come up along here and then I've just got the raw wire. I'm not, I did not put an outlet here because this will most likely just be butt connected to the mini split and then to the outdoor unit as well. And I just realized another category. The other category is communication lines. So we'll go, we'll go into that in a minute. All right, so the second circuit on the passenger side comes out, goes right here to this box. So this box will be right next to the bed. I figure that's a good place for charging your phone or things like that. So out of that one, again, that's the GFCI outlet because that's the first one on this run. All right, out of that outlet, we run down here. For the most part, I tried to keep my 110 AC lines low and then run all of the DC lines, you know, through the ceiling and down. And the reason for that is apparently there's some level of interference if the two lines are run side by side, parallel for, you know, a pretty long time. So I avoided that as best as possible. So second outlet on that circuit, that's basically the foot of the bed, which I figured might turn into a desk, you know, workspace. All right. We continue along that line and we're here at the third outlet on this side so this area is going to be our dinette couch here coming closer this would be our dinette couch area so I figured this is a good spot for workspace we could have a desk set up here eventually something like that all right so from that and also the great thing is if I need another outlet I can just use that one okay so we continue along this line and here we are to our what is that fourth box this will be for the most part it's right next to it might even be end up being a little bit blocked by the dinette but I just wanted another one as close to the dinette as possible if I need to I can actually run power into the dinette and put you know an outlet out here or something like that. So from this one, we run up and just like in the rear, we're gonna have another outlet pretty high up here and that's in case we wanna put a projector here, shine it across the room and sit in our couch dinette and watch a movie on the other side of the wall. All right, so that's it for the AC. So next up is gonna be our DC circuits. So for the DC, because voltage drop is more important on 12 volt systems because the lower your voltage is, the more it suffers from voltage drop. So what you try to do 
is minimize long runs of wire and when you do have to have long runs maximize the diameter of the wire making those runs and those will both reduce the amount of voltage drop you get so for that purpose i've got a i will have a front dc fuse box and a rear dc fuse box linking the two will be this gigantic completely overkill because that's that's the the theme here two ot gauge wire which really i don't think there's gonna be any voltage drop with this massive wire all right so we'll start here in the back at our first box so the battery system will be a 24 volt system and then it will be converted down to 12 volt so that converter will live pretty close to where that ac circuit breaker box is on this back wall and then we'll have our first fuse box dc 12 volt fuse box here all right so the entrance from that fuse box into the wall or the ceiling will be here i've got one set of eight 14 gauge wires running back to my garage to run lights so i've got eight of them that means i could have four switches right now i'm really probably only planning on using three switches but i'll have extra should i want more lights later so we'll come back here and start there so that wire is run back here and then this area will be sort of like a like a cubby let's say so I'll actually have the switches, some lights, and a wire inside the cubby here. And then I'll do like a shelving unit here with some string lights. So I basically just supplied that. And then the only lights that I've actually run in this garage area ahead of time, because the cubby will handle most of them, is the puck lights. So. That's this one wire here. On the uh, DC side, like I said a second ago, 14 gauge. That's what I went with for most, well, for all the lights. Then I went with some 12 to for uh, things like DC chargers. And then I actually went with some 10 to um, for the fridge up front. So we'll get to that in a second. All right, so this first circuit for puck lights and for the puck lights, what I did was I basically just placed plastic containers to keep a void there. And then I went ahead and spray foamed them myself with the great stuff because I figured the spray foamer would have a pretty hard time kind of turning the corner and getting back behind there. Okay, so this circuit runs here. Puck light one, puck light two, three, and four. And we're done in the garage area. All right, next circuit, next lighting circuit. And basically these were separated into switch panels. So that one runs, that's another uh, bundle of eight 14 gauge wires. That runs around here behind my max air fan and then into the bathroom area. So down here, down this direction. And then this will be my, basically my switch panel in the bathroom. So this will run string lights in the bathroom, puck lights in the bathroom, and then a string light in what will be the closet, which is you know, basically the, the entrance, one side of the entrance to the bathroom. All right, so the first circuit is coming out of the switch panel here, up and hitting this light, this light, and then back here. So this is right here is about the back end of the bathroom the max air fan above the shower and the window next to the shower okay the second circuit from the bathroom switch panel is running string lights and also like the vanity lights so that one's running out here and i actually poked it out here here two different spots i figured you know one could run a vanity light above the mirror and one, I'm thinking I will put string lights kind of behind the mirror so that they reflect off the wall and, and back at you that way. Then we run back up through the ceiling, 
string light, string light, string light. The way I'm going to organize the string lights is I'm going to hang basically a, a thin strip of like quarter inch, maybe two and, two and a half inch width wood, hang that from the ceiling, put a string light on the top side of that where you can't actually see it and let the light reflect off of the white ceiling and bat back down, you know, on you. So yeah, that one finishes that, comes out in three different spots. And then if I, for instance, if I want more string lights somewhere else, I can actually hide them on those panels that I'm talking about and still jump over to this area. Also in the bathroom while we're here, but it's strung from the front fuse box, we've got just raw power. So this could run a cigarette lighter, DC power, or a USB charger. In this wire is actually the 12 too, so it can handle a little bit more power. All right, so let's see. The third switch panel off of our rear box is going to go up, and what's the route I took? Oh, here we go. Runs up and over along this piece of strapping and down here. So this, I guess I'm calling the bedroom switch panel. So this is gonna run quite a few lights. One of the lights, one of the circuits, is going to connect to another switch at the front of the bus. It'll be a two-way switch panel. That's actually powered from the front, but there is a wire nonetheless from this switch panel to that switch panel for that purpose of the two-way lights. Let's see, what does this one run? This one's gonna run string lights in the bedroom. It's going to run puck lights in the bedroom. It's in the two-way circuit, going to run the puck lights down the hallway, which are these one, two, three, four, five puck lights along this way. I think that's it. I think that's it for those switches. So let's run up into the ceiling and show the bedroom puck lights. That's going to be this 14-2 here. Starts with this puck, second and third puck. All right, then the string lights. The string lights run up here along this side and come out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positions. Again, these will run down toward the front of the bus and be on a dimmable circuit. So they'll probably end right around where the bathroom is or this closet area. So they'll probably just run to this point here. And then the rest of those string lights will be powered or controlled in the front. Now we'll go to the front fuse box, DC fuse box. Again, we're taking this two odd gauge wire to get here. The second box lives here and those wires will enter the ceiling in this position. So you have this mass of wires. Most of them, well, not most, some hit this switch panel here. And those that don't hit that one run along here, across the front, down to the front door switch panel or the dinette area switch panel. So two of them are on two-way circuits. That's the kitchen puck lights and the kitchen string lights. The, then on this panel, the kitchen counter string lights and the kick panel string lights will be controlled just on a switch here and a dimmer. So we'll just go ahead and kind of run in, in that direction. So we'll connect across to the dinette light switch panel. From here, we're going to have one connecting to the bedroom panel, which controls these, what I'm calling the hallway lights. So basically power into this, that switch can then give power or not to the next switch. I'll take it back here. And then at this switch, you can decide if you want the lights on or off either position. So this runs up. The 14-2 catches one, two, three, four, five puck lights. 
the next circuit off of this box, and this one's controllable at the kitchen or here, is going to be your string lights. So it's one of these two here, and we pop out one, two, three, four positions for string lights running towards the back of the bus. Also off of this switch panel, we're going to have a similar cubby to what we had in the rear. This front area still has the AC unit up here, so basically I'll build a cubby that comes out and then I will transfer what were four vents behind here. I'll have to duct those out to the outside of my cubby. So for the most part, all I did for this cubby was just supply one line and then when I actually build the cubby, that's when I can place the lights and string lights. Then in also in this area, a separate circuit is these three puck lights for sort of the cab area here. And then the kitchen or let's say the living room lights. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This seventh is set out because the refrigerator will sit here. If it was in line with this, it would basically be blocked by the refrigerator. Oh, another circuit off of this is a series of four outdoor LED lights. So that's these little guys that I've mounted. They are just a flush mount LED light, about seven inches wide, I think. And this is the passenger side of the bus where basically you, you'd hang out more often than, than not. And I'll have an awning coming off of the ceiling for the outside area. So I'm hoping, even though they're flush mount and they basically shine straight out, I'm hoping they'll sort of reflect off of the awning and be a more or less direct, a more or less, a less direct light than these pretty bright LEDs. I think that's it for our lights. Yeah. I think I've covered them all. Okay, so then also from this front fuse box, we're gonna basically power the kitchen. So the 110-2 DC wire that I talked about is for the fridge. So that runs into the ceiling, down to one of these, I don't know which one, and out here and out of the wall right here. Also with that, is a string of 12-2. That comes out of the wall here, here, and then I think I actually split it and I run out here also. So that 12-2, you know, honestly, I don't know what I'll need it for. It'll probably be cigarette lighter, DC power, but you know, it's always best to just run a few extra lines just in case you need more power, especially in the kitchen. That's probably where you'll, you'll end up using it. Oh, underneath the floor here, where these two wires terminate is a diesel, external diesel heater. So these are the original lines which used to snake up to the dash area. And also they were powered by the, the bus batteries. So I've undone those, shortened them, and run them up in this area to my switch panel here. The two things that run that system are just an on-off switch for the fan that blows the heat, and then a Wabasto, kind of like a head unit, you know, control unit. So that's actually hiding inside of here. And then I ran two extra sets of power to this area to be used for that diesel heater. Okay, so let's see, we've done AC, we've done DC. Might as well just get over with the solar power. So on the other side of the ceiling here, uh, yesterday I installed a photovoltaic entry gland. And here, come up close, just so we can see these. It actually runs through the ceiling through two grommets. And then on the other side there is the gland. So that's basically a plastic box with what are called glands. Let me go grab one. It's got a rubber, um, kind of like a grommet bushing kind of thing. You run your line 
through there and then when you tighten this cap it cinches down on your the housing of your your wire to create a watertight seal so there's two of those up on the ceiling and i think i left about five feet on the other side and i've got probably 12 feet on the inside here because this is going to come down this wall underneath the bed and then i'll probably have the charge controller somewhere underneath the bed in this vicinity so there's definitely some extra here but you always want to cut a little more oh water that's right so this is another quick one what i've done here is this is a locking freshwater fill tank or fill module let's call it so basically what i've done is the only thing i've installed ahead of time is a half inch female to half inch push lock sharp bite adapter and then otherwise i just taped this up this box that i've built is actually going basically through the wall so when i spray foam we're only going to trim you know to to be flush with these straps and then I'll still have access to get to this, even though I, I haven't put the, the PEX line or anything like that on that. I'll be able to access it later. All right, so the final thing is communication lines. So there are three types. There is my side and rear view cameras. There is the battery monitoring or the Servo GX line. And then I've also done a third type of communication lines and that's for these projectors. <clears throat> these projectors that I plan on having um, in, the, in the bedroom and then up by the front couch dinette area. So we'll start with those. The idea behind that is basically you would have your phone or your computer, you know, playing whatever media, you know, down here at uh, bed level. And then you'd have your projector up above you shooting, you know, the video so you can watch it. So basically it's just a set of HDMI and USB cables to transfer from one point to another. So back here in the bedroom at the foot of the bed, I've got one outlet box and sorry, it's taped already, but there is a promise an HDMI, outlet and a USB outlet and those two wires run up along here back towards the back and they terminate here in a box right next to that 110 outlet that we talked about earlier so basically the idea is we would mount our projector here connect our cables here and our power there and there would be probably a shelving unit right along here all right so that's the back bedroom area for the projector in the front area because I figured uh, to the right of the dinette is most likely going to be a desk area so that'd be a good spot to sit your laptop plug in just like you did there to a box here then those two cables run up along here I had a lot of access and bought them in 12 foot lengths but turns out I didn't need that much so run the excess back and forth a few times and then terminate in a box here again right next to this 110 outlet in the front all right so our next communication line series is two side cameras and one rear camera so the rear camera i mounted basically on the other side of that cardboard box here we'll go back here basically right behind this is the rear view camera kind of looks down at the bumper that line is run along here, up this area, up along here. I was really surprised the cable was long enough, but it definitely was. Runs along here, shoots all the way up front, and we'll get there eventually when we get to the side view, but it comes out by the kind of front left corner of the dashboard. All right, I've got another side camera here, and one here also. This one runs along that wall up and then crosses actually at the lower ceiling across there to the same point. And then we'll follow this one to show you the, the real termination. So this one kind of up diagonally through that channel B 
behind this strapping here, tucked in behind these wires. These, uh, by the way, are AC lines. There's a condenser underneath the floor here, so those just were in the bus already, and they're still tied into the bus power because you would only run them when you're actually running the compressor on the engine. So anyway, tucked in that uh, side view camera line kind of behind them. We run up here, and then we can't see it right now because of all the masking, but there's a hole with a grommet, and then those three lines come out down towards the dashboard in this area. There's a plastic panel that actually already covers the drain line for this AC unit, so basically I'll just remount that and that'll hide all those lines. All right, so the final line, the final circuit is Turbo GX battery monitoring, and that one's pretty complicated. So when you buy the Servo GX and the Victron Touch 70 or 50, they give you, I think it comes with the Touch, they give you six and a half feet of HDMI slash USB cable. The way that works is the USB plugs into your Servo GX and all it does is power the head unit on the Touch 50 or 70. The HDMI is what actually, you know, transfers the, the information. Well, in almost all school, school bus builds, six and a half feet is nothing. I mean, you're going to probably have your batteries in the back and you're going to want to look at the monitor, you know, somewhere in your kind of living room area, which is, which is probably going to be 15 to 20 feet away. And in my case, that's exactly what it was. So what you actually do is you have to power that USB cable somewhere inside of your wall and then you have to extend the HDMI. So the only extension cable you buy is an HDMI. You do not extend the USB cable. You just power it somewhere inside of the wall. So that's what we've done. So we'll come back here and entering in the wall through the same port where I've run these AC lines is an HDMI, a shielded HDMI extension cable. I think this was a 20 foot cable, something like that, maybe 25. All right, so that runs along here, comes here, and it, it must have been a lot more than 20 feet, honestly, because I've got a, a bunch of excess. And I wrapped up some of that excess here, and then it terminates right there. So I've got a female to female adapter Basically, I'm plugging in my extension cable to one side, and then this is the start of the Servo GX cable. That's that six and a half foot cable. And you can see that there is a thinner USB cable next to the HDMI. So those are tied in together. And then behind this tape here, what I've run is an extra power line from that front fuse box. And I've got a 12 volt to, I think it's five volt, is USB charging, um, an adapter, I guess it would be a converter, to power that USB cord. So the USB is plugged in here, the adapter's tied up in here, I think that's that box right there. And then basically in here, in the wall, is where the start of the Victron cable is. So I run around here, up this area, and then actually stuffed inside of this box, which is you know shared space with this switch panel, is the actual monitor. I've got the Touch 50 because it's just smaller and cheaper. So that's actually just completely run already. All you'd really have to do is plug in the HDMI cord, uh, the Servo GX in the back and you're, you're ready to roll because it's already got power. And that's it, I think, I think I've gone through it all. So anyone using my example as a tutorial, just know that I used Chuck Cassidy's channel as my tutorial. I'm sure he does a much better job than my quick and dirty explanation. He goes into great detail, so 
absolutely if you haven't found that channel find it but otherwise you know the idea is exactly the same you basically just want to hide all of your wiring ahead of time behind your walls so that the spray foam insulation you know once it's in it is what's holding everything in that's why you really don't have to worry about it being perfectly attached you know you may notice that the only thing holding any of this stuff in is some duct tape because it only needs to hold it temporarily once you get the spray foam in then that's really what's holding it still and yeah that's pretty much it so next phase spray it thank you for watching Put a block of wood back there, I can feel the pit. Yeah. Um, in exactly the same spot. <laughs> Turn up.